so i'm staying um, at chik tirupati i used to stay in bangalore we moved away from the city about 2 years back uh, i have twins they are they just turned 7 and they are very different their likings the way they learn things are very different uh, we have been unschooling them and it's it's quite a journey it's exciting i love every bit of it enjoying it but yes um, like all of you know all the parents who are on this path even i have my own doubts and uh, you know some hurdles and yes here we are together to brainstorm and just learn from each other's journey thank you so much i'll go ahead hi everybody uh i am manvi this is he's in the video my son anhat he is 3 and a half years old uh we are based in delhi and uh just last year only 2021 was the year we decided we thought a lot and we decided that we would like to um explore the path of homeschooling and so far i'm loving it homeschooling me i i think i i would like to call it uh unschooling or as ratneshi likes to call it uh, open schooling i love that term open schooling open learning so here i am i am loving to come to these meetings learning from everybody and brainstorming with everybody so that's me mera aisa lo point lo dusra lo wo mera i know aapka hai wo i know ye aapka aur dusra lo mera okay beta yeah hi everybody my name is vivi am i audible so now it went down yours is always a roller coaster <laughs> it it came back yeah just yeah yes. now it's fine now it's fine okay so um yeah we have 11 and a half year old almost 12 year old now uh we've been a part of the roe community for about 3 years but i have been an open learner way longer than that and uh, rohi kind of gave me the uh, language and the vocabulary to talk more about this and uh, yeah been a part of uh, co organizing co facilitating these sessions uh what is it 91st or 90th or 91st one now and yeah. it's been good fun and look forward to the conversations today okay la beta igri more people um, mariam rachna tahura i think uh, all of you have been here before this the sense yeah. i get from the names so would you like to um just introduce if you can come on video great if you can't at least on mic you can just share if not on mic at least on chat you can share uh, any which way is fine hello hi i am sabira and i am yeah yeah I'm Kavita Sheik, and uh, I have a year-old son. So, and um, I've been just uh, navigating through how to be nice towards children, and my especially my own uh, child. I'm based in Bharat, uh, that is near the Amravati district. And um, uh, when I started out learning about uh, how education would work out for my child. I stumbled upon this Montessori method, and uh, then I've been very religiously, I would say, reading about and learning about that. And then eventually, I found out about this open learning and what it is. And I'm just figuring it out with you all. So yeah, that's my journey. Thanks, thanks, Tavura. Welcome. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Rachna, would you like to say hi to the group? Hey, hi. Hi. Yeah, welcome back. <laughs> um, yeah, mother of twins, who are six year old, <laughs> and uh, I've been interacting with this uh, Arohi community, like the Saturday sessions, and following up a lot of activities that are happening, uh, being part of the Telegram group or Jagrati. Uh, it's been uh, six months now that I'm. 
following up with uh, or trying to keep uh, in touch with Arohi. Uh, so all this started off uh, two years, one and a half year back when I decided to switch my children from regular schooling to homeschooling. Uh, that's when I found my path going towards Arohi and uh, yes, walking in that path. You're great. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Rachna. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> since we have all been here before, I don't need to bother you with the presentation or whatever. We can directly dive in into uh, discussions. And incidentally, Prachi has twins and Rachna has twins, six, seven years. Wow, <laughs> today is a twins day. <laughs> we are on 22nd uh, January of 22. So it's anyway 2222, two, 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 you know. <laughs> What a coincidence, right? <laughs> so the dates match with your arriving it, arriving here. <laughs> right. Okay. So right. Any uh, we, we can start with any thought or question, Prachi. You uh, had since you had written it, so you can grab the floor. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much. And yeah, I mean, it's uh, nice to see familiar faces. So, Rachna, I th we have uh, you know connected otherwise also. Yes. So, um, you know, the biggest worry for me right now is, I don't know if I should call it even worry. Uh, so, uh, my kids, uh, one girl, one boy, they're very different in the way. I mean, their likings are different. And the... Um, Uh, I think you went mute, uh, Prachi. I guess you're changing places. Yes, uh, for yeah. the next. Yeah. So uh, the kind of things they like are very different, and they're learning. The way they learn is also very different. So my, you know, my girl is very like you know meticulous. She would want a to, things to be done in a particular order, perfect things, and she would be the one who who loves writing, reading, all the things which usually are expected from a you know <laughs> child whereas my son is the opposite but he's very good at outdoors or you know skating he would pick up those kind of things very fast he knows you know he's, he's very um, keen about cars he wants to be a f1 racer so he, his his world is very different whereas when i tell him okay right no no i don't want to write or you know he so he doesn't feel reading writing is very relevant um that is one thing or i suspect is there some problem because of which he doesn't want to do it because um if, if the same concept i'm i'm kind of explaining both of them she will grasp it easily but then he at that moment yes will exhibit that he has understood but if i kind of quiz them later he would probably go back to square one so then I feel, is there some learning disability? Should I be worried? Uh, because you're not following any curriculum. Will Am I, do, am I missing out on something? Am, I, can I do something better? Or is there some intervention needed? If at all there is a learning disability, I understand in, nowadays we hardly need to really write essays and all of that. It's all computer. So should I be worried um, if at all he says, I really don't like writing? So all these uh, thoughts are kind of clouding right now for me uh, and probably uh, magnified because the way they both are so different. So when she does something with ease and finesse, I feel, is there something wrong with him? Though I know it's, it's stupid to compare, <coughs> but it just, um, so I thought this is the time when I really need some guidance. <coughs> Yeah. So thank you, Prachi, for asking this question. This was my main question for which even I came into <laughs> this session. Uh, yeah, I am in the same boat. So yeah, that will help <laughs> me as well today. So the, the twin streak continues, huh? <laughs> so do people having the same question. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you feel? I mean, um, you do seem to have something on your mind, Prachi. It's not that you just have the question. Uh, so one part of me is, it says, it's okay. Even if he's slow, 
probably doesn't like reading writing it's okay but the other part of me says no but it's a skill he he should know or if there's really a problem will it hamper later on and when it's too late to probably mend so i have these conflicting thoughts in my mind while i can see the things which he's good at he's really good at mm -hmm. which probably my girl child uh, my girl is nowhere close or you know she she doesn't have even interest and i know he's he's much he does those things much better um but yes this conflict um see i know because we have chosen this path consciously i i'm not getting into peer comparison or all that but it's just that worry that am i missing out on some skill building which is hard to repair later on yeah so to answer your question in a very different way i think you need something more to occupy your time <laughs> 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 because you have the answer but then you have some time in which you want to invest in this <laughs> right so yeah, I yeah. Mean, uh, as a corollary i heard that you changed track and moved to uh some like a exurban village kind of rural setting yes. right um yes. you didn't do that move when you were 20 years old did you no it wasn't and doesn't look like you did it at the start of your career either no right so i'm pretty sure you heard isn't it too late for you to be changing tracks <laughs> hmm and how are you doing now doing fine excellent yeah. rather very happy yeah yeah so so what is the right time to be changing tracks yeah there's no right time yeah 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 and Rachi yeah i know i'm guilty of this this is the right time to change tracks and prachi son will be in a situation where he realizes hey dude i probably need to learn how this english thing works yeah, yeah. i need to be able to read my what what do they call that the core uh, what is what do they call that the core strategy or something like that for how you go about the track why when they are doing these formula one yeah yeah, right? yeah 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 it is written in some language so, yeah 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 and yes and then i feel so, guilty of so yeah, know, unknowingly I, I putting that, that pressure on him like why can't you do this like and my husband is like no you should not be using this language keep it in your head don't get it out so yes that balance we try to maintain but yes i thought it would be good to just you know have that yeah. little wisdom sprinkled on me <laughs> <laughs> well we sprinkle more questions than answers so yes. yeah <laughs> yes which is good yeah. rachna would you like to add to that or uh, take that further oh, I, i have seen the similar thing with my uh, pair of twins my son is extremely good with uh, outdoor activities and certain activities which is very easily able to grasp it but uh, yeah when i see my daughter she struggles but yeah there are so many other things which she does so specifically so logically and also reasoning out things why she wants to do it that way but my son is more like a driven through his you know heart he doesn't want to be driven through logical part of it uh another thing that i see is um, is this uh, i don't know if uh, you have heard or maybe prachi must be aware of this theory that many people believe when we are having twins it's very much important to keep them separate at least for some duration in a time connection with the child like the first twin and the second twin and give them individual uh, time to concentrate and work on uh, so that the influence is not there on each other you know but i feel many a times i haven't implemented that but many a times i see the influence on each other is huge and very positive okay though i know <laughs> rohi doesn't positive negative but yeah <laughs> to talk it in more uh, of terms um the impact is very huge on each other and uh, one example i want to quote is uh, my daughter is very much interested in reading and writing and my son is not at all interested now he can't sit in one place for more than 
five seconds. He needs to keep moving around. Um, so I see off late because she is so interested in reading stories and reading things which are put across. He is now putting effort to read and to become somewhere. I see that he, my perspective is he wants to become like her in reading and uh, in reasoning it out. So I'm worried now that will he not look into himself as an individual and um, look at himself as he is also unique and he is also a different person. So he is also valued for what he is. He need not do everything what uh, his uh, sister does so that uh, he feels that he's one among the crowd. Uh, we have never had an environment where we do shabash giri for one child and put the other child down or any way that sort. So I don't know from where that comes or am I reasoning it wrong? Yeah, so these are the basic things which I struggle day to day and uh, that self guilt, you know, should I do something about it? Now, should I provide some environment here to support them? Or mm -hmm. not, uh, just yeah. sit back and watch. So, so just a quick question there. Um, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I, I haven't come across this theory. I, my, one of my uncles is, uh, they, they were twins and uh, his grandchildren are twins. So I, the, my nephew, they are my nephews. But other than that, I haven't come across. But I have a more uh, simple question. Uh, it's not that, well, it, whether the twins or not, everybody would love attention. And attention that is, you know, specific to them, not like everybody gets one dosa and the same dosa and nobody else gets chutney, everybody only gets dosa, you know, the, everybody would like to get what they want, right? So in that sense, I can understand that there is a theory that says, you know, give them individual attention. But that's true about every relationship, whether you take a mother child or a spousal relationship or even a work relationship, right? Nobody would like it to be a generic thing. You know? So, um, so, so I can, you know, kind of sync with that. But then I'm also thinking, you know, it's not like there's only one age in which we are influenced by the other person, right? Uh, it's not that uh, just because, uh, like I just shared, I mean, as spouses, we have a relationship and, you know, we are constantly being influenced by each other. And that give and take is life, right? And, and as we are interacting, I mean, we have a very good relationship here between some of us here because every Saturday we are meeting each other nowadays, right? And there are certain things that we, we feel we relate with each other. So that kind of an exchange, I feel has to be encouraged, not discouraged. I mean, I'm not a theorist. I'm not an expert on anything here. But I feel why be scared of exchanges of behavior, of ideas, of habits, whether good or bad, <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, so that's that's my take on that. No bad. How about others? No no joined us. <laughs> and there's no effort, Viji, so that happens very quick. <laughs> so uh, my only concern is he should not uh, come into a thought that what she does I should do the same. Then only, you know, life is secure. I, I, I can do what I want to, is what I want to imbibe in him that he's, he's free. He needs mm -hmm. to, his root, it's okay if it doesn't be her path. So that's where, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe more observation will help me. Yeah, but I would also, in, in that sense, I would say, uh, you know, I would like to ask the question of, okay, observation of who? Observation of right. his actions, his thoughts. So that way I will get what he's trying to do. Maybe I'm wrong as of now. Mm -hmm. Because I am okay, but I would, kind of a condition. I would ask a further follow-up, Rachna. Because if he's absorbing things around him, he's very uh, good at grasping things. And he's also trying to, in your own words, do the things like his sister is doing or his twin sister is doing. Um, should you be also be reflecting on some of the other things that's happening around him? How are others interacting with the two of them? Yeah, so as with a, him and his sister. Yeah, it's just the four of us. 
if I have to see mm -hmm. neighbors and around, uh, my son is more pampered than my daughter. Uh, mm -hmm. So he, uh, he replicates her only in terms of um, reading, writing, mm -hmm. uh, storytelling part of it. Otherwise, he doesn't replicate. Most like he's bindas, he's perfect or whatever. He has a good confidence when it comes to other activities. He doesn't want to good. replicate. Yeah. Yeah. In our case, good. it's come. So because mm -hmm. he knows that um, Vibha, my daughter, has this strength of reading, he tries to use her as a resource. And he's like, Are ye bhi na. just read this for me. Super. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Should I be happy about this? Yeah, yesterday I met this uh, senior couple. They're in their um, late 60s, early 70s. And uh, the auntie was saying, uh, you know, this guy is so good that everybody who worked for him was smarter than him. But they worked for him for 30 years. You know? So he had this team that worked for uncle and you know, 30 year old relationship and each of them apparently was smarter than uncle who was the boss. So you are the boss when you get smart people to work for you. <laughs> I think Pranav also wants to add some points. Please Pranav. Nothing, nothing to add here. Nothing. Oh, I, I saw your hand oh, somewhere. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so good. I mean, I don't see any, uh, I mean, personally, from whatever you have shared, I don't think there's any anything to worry about if the, if one child is mimicking the other child or is being smart enough to use the other person as a resource, because that's the way we learn. That's the way we grow in society. And at some point, probably he will realize that, hey, why am I asking her? Why can't I just do it myself? Right? So, yeah. Yeah. Ratnesh, I don't know. I've been talking a lot. Great. Awesome. <laughs> Not really. Uh, the only thing I want to say is that everybody is learning disabled. I am learning disabled. Prachi, you are learning disabled. Dwiji is learning disabled. Manvi is learning disabled. Rachna is learning disabled. Everybody. You show me a person and I will show the learning disability that person has. Uh, the problem is not with being learning disabled. The problem is, is that we consider that as a problem. We think that we need to rectify it, mend people, make their noses straight, make their cheeks fluffier, makes their chin pointy. I don't know what we want to make. Right. So, yeah, that's my way of looking at it. I would put it a slightly differently, Ratnesh. As in, uh, I would go back to that earlier aspect of individual attention, right? Uh, being able to recognize what each individual, who each individual is, and building a relationship with that individual rather than having a standard child in mind. You know, the Puji, you are frozen. <laughs> okay, I guess Vijay will come back in due course of time. <laughs> right, so I, I, I also want... But I like your thought, Ratnesh. We all are learning disabled. This is going to stay with me. Yeah, yeah any, anytime you have a doubt, you let me know. I'll tell you your learning disability. <laughs> 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 that helps. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and if you allow me, I'll bless you with me. You always be in awe and confusion of uh, how your two children are totally different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, it's a blessing in a way, uh, which, which, uh, which is great. But yes, having that perfect, you know, seven-year-old who does, does X, Y, Z, which everybody does at that point, I know it's not there. And I, I frankly don't feel any, anything bad about it, but it's that 
um, direct difference between the both sometimes worries me if it's okay it's not okay yes while i know the answer it's that just probably uh, somebody just let me know it's all okay kind of a thing and that's been raji seriously you, get okay. something else to get busy about <laughs> absolutely I, i'm sure will <laughs> and and, and uh, that's that's been the biggest issue with the conventional schooling meaning you're talking about two children we are talking about maybe 20 million or whatever number it is right where everybody is considered just to be exactly the same because everybody is being taught the same content right in exactly the same yeah. standards so to say so every years every year you are supposed to exactly conform to a certain content i mean it's quite mm. amazing when I mean, you're talking about two children we're talking about some 20 billion or billion whatever number is of all children yeah. being exactly the same and that's that's the real issue with the yeah. with the conventional system right yeah and which is why we are in a way here we are saying hey come on why do we need to subscribe to it uh, necessarily I meaning if you like it great but if you don't like yeah. it step out of it as simple as that yeah yeah uh duji you wanted to also bring in the aspect of community i, I was waiting for that but so we started off with a community of two uh, <laughs> with with a mom or a dad out there uh, yeah. uh, uh, but let's 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 hear what duji has in store for us and let's take that discussion also on yeah so um each week as some of you know we try to get a theme to the session so that we have a little bit of a focus as then me and too much which is good to me and but yeah <laughs> so um the idea today was uh, you know the how and why and what of community and uh, um community as in why is the, why, why do we need a community you know when we are engaging in open learning and uh, some of us feel that you know when we are learning we are doing a very personal activity and some of us are very social and are always in the action and want to do things with others now uh, each one has a different way of learning each one has a different uh, you know speed at which they learn but when we look at taking the non spats like all of us here are interested in or already on this path um it 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 helps to be able to talk to others like rachna and prachi were sharing um sharing your concern sharing your experiences your joys your you know failures so so that it it's that that idea of learning not just by ourselves but also from others is even more practical and there is also a support structure for each of us uh, we find in this community so so the idea of arohi is not just or arohi's way of learning is not just of me myself and my world but rather uh, this with everyone else around us in the real world rather than removed from the real world so um, so in that sense you know arohi's version of learning is a community um, you know supported or community active community engaged uh, open learning or a learning process where it is not just the child but rather the family and everyone else who's interested in these things who they would they as the family would like to engage with and uh, and so that's that's the whole idea of community and bringing in the community uh, in our learning process rather than keeping it to something that is exclusively mine and naturally and rachis and uh, rachna's twins if you look at the community there are way more diverse people and that kind of increases the exposure that each of our children get if uh, you know when compared to what they would if it was if they were just interacting with their own parents and and as we grow from our immediate family to a larger you know uh, um, shared identity family uh, we also realize that hey it's not just these people i can ask that milkman who gets milk in a, on our street and he will teach something right 
or that i can go and talk to the security person in the apartment or you know at the bus stop or in the metro station and maybe he will tell me how that buzzer thing works right so learning not limited to a particular space or a particular set of people but rather a larger community so that was the long spiel of the short summary that i had shared so yeah so um in some sense we do emphasize that open learning is something that we do in life rather than as something that we do exclusively between the age of what is it 3 and 20 <laughs> and after that you are done no that doesn't work that way life goes on learning goes on and when we have a community of open learners there is that constant give and take that happens which kind of adds a lot of masala to life <laughs> and our own learning process yeah so i i i've talked enough i think <laughs> yeah so more thoughts questions specifically if you have some thoughts or questions about uh, about community open learning not just open learning but community open learning but otherwise if you have any other thoughts and questions about open learning also is most welcome i have a very um i have a i have a thought or i have a question here so any open or any community learning i believe to you know um to achieve something collectively or to do something collectively there has to be some rhythm like you know we do this then we do that then we do that like a rhythm of the day uh what if you know there is a child who comes in who says hey you know what i i don't like to follow this rhythm then how does the community you know how how can the uh, does the child sink in with the community how how does this work then with with the child who is not probably able to sink in with the routine this is just a random thought because okay it stems from this that um, i feel for a house to you know function nicely it helps to have a rhythm so um for example my daughter loves to sleep late wake up late but i'm like please yaar sleep please sleep because then we can do things at a time so um so my question comes from here that does it make sense to have everybody sink in or um is it okay to just like let each individual follow their own timings and whenever like it's possible to have a common time we sit together uh, you know talk about things resources and do some teaching learning together so a clarification question when you say rhythm are you necessarily meaning a time based rhythm or not particularly uh, time but like you know okay generally between 7 to 8 let's wake yeah, up yeah that's what when you say that yeah. when you using the word rhythm uh, are you necessarily meaning a time rhythm yes because yes. rhythm can be of yeah. so many different let's say kind let's say yeah yeah it need not uh, just be about time time is only one aspect you want to have a rhythm of time that is one way of doing it yeah but there can be so many other rhythms how about exploring other rhythms not hmm. time rhythm but other rhythms hmm okay yeah yes it's Would it's you, good to share explore. an example with me Uh, I, I'm waiting. Somebody can share an example before Preeti. I jump. <laughs> Preeti, uh, Preeti, is it the same Preeti? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. same Preeti. We can see I'm some Pranav's face. <laughs> I'm driving and I'm just <laughs> guys. So, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm more asking the the group, not you, Dwiji. The rest of the group. Uh, uh, what ah, other rhythms <laughs> what other rhythms can be have you found in your own life rhythm not of time but other rhythms in, even if it's just individual rhythm even if it's not a uh, 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 group rhythm i think uh, for me i've realized after my marriage i realized that interests is also kind of a rhythm 
Like what kind of my husband loved trekking. I'm saying love because after marriage he's like, अरे तुम भी चलो मेरे साथ. I don't like trekking. So now he also doesn't do go for trekking, which is very bad. I keep on telling him, you do what you want. I do what I want. I don't want to do that. So let's not zavardasti pull each other with each other. Uh, but yes, so if one person, I really found this question to be naive because you know, if one person doesn't fall in that rhythm, then does the rest of the group let that person be, or what happens? Interesting. Now we have just don't have a time based rhythm. We have an interest based rhythm. Okay, more rhythms, more examples. Rhythm bases the light. like sunlight light darkness which kind of again okay. uh, yeah that's more still a time based rhythm yeah. as in the cycle of time but any other ways of rhythm uh, other than time so dwiji you are on mute the mood count Like yeah, sorry, somebody was saying yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. So yes. sometimes I plan the activities or the things what we want to do based on my children's uh, activeness. So they're quite active uh, the first half of the day, and um, okay, okay, activeness in the second half, and uh, totally down or not ready to do any kind of instructed work or uh, team work. Six. So, Superb. so energy based rhythm. Yeah, so I usually plan that. Hmm, energy based rhythm. Interesting. Maybe there could be a rhythm wherein you are uh, more comfortable with certain set of people, or you know, social rhythms. Absolutely, yeah. Pranab. Super yeah. social rhythms. So, so you want to be involved in particular event or task or whatever activity based on that? Ha, yeah, yeah. So, I will also go. And name is not there, I will be interested. Something of that sort. So, could absolutely. Be, one which i have always been fighting you know again i'm i'm little countering the school system we know why are all 10 years old in one classroom does that mean that the rhythm has to be only within the same age oh how can that be possible right so uh, that that itself just takes away the whole rhythm of uh, you know which who with whom i want to do what right the social rhythm super pranav i love it more rhythms <laughs> we can go on and on and on we can discover so many rhythms inside us i think uh, interestingly one uh, rhythm lessness that i'm finding with rest of my lot of people around me is this belief of schooling so you know my rhythm is sort of going according to them i'm going off rhythm right <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you have your own rhythm i have my own rhythm exactly so this is also i don't know belief beliefs a uh, rhythm maybe we can say could be could be also as since we were talking about the rachna and prach you were talking about their twins so we also have a style rhythms yeah like somebody i heard mention can't sit for more than whatever 10 seconds to write or read something like that sorry i'm forgetting the exact uh, what you said but the whole point is each one has this style and when our style matches with somebody who has the same style or at least is showing the same style right then there there is a rhythm match there right so style rhythms happen and and there can be many more examples so the the point i'm trying to present is that uh, when you are in in first of all when you are in open learning uh you realize uh, and you explore you become aware and explore your own rhythms and and as you expand that to a community maybe first the family community and then more families you you start exploring enjoying um and using that to connect collaborate rhythms with different people in within the community yeah and and that is so amazing so when i am in i mean i am in campus all the time and there are children here or even online when i interact with children i see so many different kinds of rhythm right like the social rhythm pranav talked about or the uh, or the mood rhythm or the and mood or stroke the energy rhythm or the 
uh, interest rhythm that is so, so important. So, so there's so many rhythms. So why get locked up with only time rhythm? I'm not saying time rhythm is not important. I'm just saying that's just one of the rhythm. So if we, if we start, if we let the community organically explore different rhythms, then the whole community will get its own mixed masala of multiple rhythms. Which if you come from one rhythm point of view may look very disturbing. But if you leave that single rhythm point of view and you are ready to enjoy different rhythm, then it, it's so much fun. I don't know if I made sense. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. Which is why I like community because there are so many rhythms and people are naturally able to both find their own rhythms as well as learn new rhythms. Because uh, something else pulls them into something else and something else pulls them out of something else and so on. So that's, uh, that itself is so beautiful. A lot of people tell me, ah, the way we spend the week, let's say in campus, because that's where guests come. Guests don't really come in the open, in the online community. But let's say when guests come, they say in one week, the kind of, they don't mention the word, but the kind of series of flow of engagements that they got involved with isn't what they would do in a normal at-home life. So the, it's, a, it's a very different experience for them, not just time-wise, but different other rhythms. Yeah. And I think the beauty of this and system is, see, because as individuals, we are evolving. And as new people come in, we are again evolving. So the entire system is kind of evolving and the rhythms are evolving. So which again, I think helps everybody to kind of rethink and um, come back to evaluate whether my rhythm is fine, whether I need to change, change my individual rhythm and things like that. Tuji, we need to clip this one because yeah. uh, Prachi, the word Arohi means evolving. <laughs> yeah. 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 And and a good point. The, the I mean, just building or uh, you know supporting your point of view, Prachi. Um, this evolution happens when there is an exchange of ideas and practices, and uh, and and a recognition that I have a rhythm, Prachi has a rhythm, Ratnesh has a rhythm. Now the three of us have to do something together, right? So somehow we have to negotiate that, co-create that rhythm that will work for all three of us, right? So uh, I might want to do something, you might want to do something, Manmi might want to do something, but when all of us want to do something together, we have to work out something that works for all of us, right? So the value of a community is not just in um, you know, in arriving at an evolved state, but rather the journey itself leads to a lot of, uh, you know, internal uh, consciousness or being aware of yourself or oneself. Yeah, and, and I, I just very got important. This, uh, from this discussion, like earlier, I used to feel guilty. Am I imposing things? But I think I just need to change the way I present things. Like, see, if we have to do something during the day together, it's important we sink in. So how do you think can we sink in? So I think the way I should put things is, uh, is in a, I should do that in a different way. Yeah, thank you for that. I mean, I'm not necessarily saying it's about presentation. I'm saying it's about co-creation. Correct. So, but, but the presentation, uh, which I was doing was more of prescriptive. Like, see, if we have to do this, we need to do this, mm -hmm. which is coming from me. But I think yeah. um, I should put it mm -hmm. like, okay, we all love to spend some time together during the day. These are the limitations. This is my rhythm. Mm -hmm. This is your rhythm. What do you think we need to do to sink in? Beautiful. And kind of co, you know, yeah. um, like bring in the solution together mm -hmm. than me doing the thinking and me presenting it. I think it should come as a team together. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Lovely. Lovely. So 
I was muted earlier. I was just saying, Tahura, feel free to unmute and talk. We we are just chatting and you know, don't mm -hmm. don't hold yourself back. We are not all you know some gyanis or something here. So uh, you know, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and talk, or if you prefer typing, that's perfectly fine too. And Pralo, why are you so quiet today? Nothing to add. Nothing to add. I was just listening. Uh, hi. Tahura uh, here. So uh, I, when I discovered this open learning thing and uh, when I'm trying to blend that with this Montessori uh, philosophy that I'm learning about, it's coming very easy to me. Like, it's okay. I don't have to have too much of expectations. Let the child be. It's okay. He's going to learn everything. That is something very clear to me now because I'm also attending the Jagrati program. So it's, a, it's coming easy to me. But when I see um, people around me, especially my own sisters, then it becomes uh, very, it's something that is uh, putting a burden on me that I know all this, but I'm letting them just be like that. Like I'm letting them put the pressure on their kids. I'm letting them do, uh, I'm, uh, you know like um it's not it's not settling in with me that i know all this and then just letting letting them be so how do i bring that concept to them like how do i bring this awareness because for example if i uh, bring in one of my sisters i can't just ask her to attend this uh, open learning sessions i can't uh, 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 ask them to attend the jagriti trainings and all that because they're not uh, equipped with this con for uh, like they don't know english one of them doesn't know english so how is she gonna attend this okay that's one it's just a thought that i'm saying that how do i present this concept to them how do i bring that small changes in them so that they are aware about what is happening here because that's our yeah. aim, right we just so that Tahira, if i can rephrase your mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, sorry, I kind of interrupted you, but I was just trying to rephrase your question in, in the theme of the day. So uh, in some sense, what you're asking is, how do I merge my uh, you know family community with my open learning community, right? Yeah, that- How I do guess. we expand? Expand these learnings to my yeah. community, I would say, my family, yes. So. Yeah, yeah. Good, good question. Good question. Good. I would like to hear others' thoughts and before I share my own. So uh, I'm pretty sure everyone is engaged in this kind of a, I mean, grappling with this question. So, yeah, just to say, I don't know. Initially, uh, when we just started this journey, and we understood the kind of beauty and the you know, weight functions, so we wanted to kind of you know. Pass it on that positive thing to everybody and all. And then and at times you would feel people are kind of blocked. They are they in a way block you out and they don't want to have that conversation. So best you can do is probably first have the conversation uh, in, in a very neutral manner without uh, being an influencer or anything of that sort. That's what I realized. And after a, a little while I felt I think I, I don't have to change anyone or have to change their perception to anything. Uh, I can just offer uh, uh, in a manner, the fact or something which I'm doing, that's it. And if somebody is not willing to have that conversation, probably I have to just rest and relax. So, so that came from the book I read was Illusion. film So let's not push and force everybody to come to the same theater and watch the same movie. So this is our journey and I love this path. I love this journey. And I want to watch this movie. Somebody wants to watch horror. Somebody wants to watch romantic film. Somebody wants to watch action film, let them do what they want to do. And there is no probably right wrong. And and yeah, you are at peace at what you are doing and you should not be burdened. So initially it used to pain as well. Like, you know, why don't people understand? But then you see at times there could be constraints, there could be limitations, uh, there could be factors beyond their control too. And hence they probably don't want to you know, diverge to their, this, this path. So, so let them be, and I, I want to be at my peace. That's it. Don't want to stir too many things. So that's what I have done. 
Yeah, I love that perspective. <laughs> But what if they are open to learning? Like, I have sisters that, like, I have some people who are like, okay, I can't do this. My situation does not allow me to do this. But some who want to do this but do not have the, uh, I don't know, privilege to learn, to explore these possibilities. No, I think in that case, uh, there is no, no, no constraint. Like, if one is intended or, you know, wanting to do, I think uh, the community, as a community, I'm saying, uh, there would be uh, enough, uh, you know, people to take care of the needs and uh, support each other. That's, that's what I can say. Yeah, that's that's very beautifully said, Pranav. Uh, I, I'm just plus one in that, that the community is there uh, uh, to support whoever wants to. So I'm sure within the community, there'll be somebody who can connect with them. Either the language is same or the geographical location is similar, whichever way. So that, that's not a constraint and that's the beauty of community. There's always somebody who will connect with uh, you and your, your sisters. Or, or finally, the join community and join come to Aroi. <laughs> so anyway we are a big community and we all so things will be taken care of. I don't know if I'm sinking in with this because I was just listening while driving so um, so Arohi X does that right like uh, that's the point of uh, this online learning thing right yeah i'm i'm not sure but is that it yeah it's not online learning <laughs> it's just yeah. online community, community. So online togetherness yeah just like we are together right now yeah there is another very um, uh, important uh, thought. I, I'm not trying to say you are there, but I, I'm just stating it as a general thought. A lot of people ask this question in these uh, uh, meetups that, you know, my grandmother, the child grandparents don't agree to it, as in my parents don't agree to it, my whatever relatives don't agree to it, they are not convinced about it, they keep questioning. In your case, you want to tell them, but in many cases, they are like getting pushed back, so to say. So, uh, I, I, I think the key word which he has already shared is co-creation. Uh, it's not about we knowing better than them or uh, yeah, so there is no knowing uh, according to me. I don't know any better than anybody. I just, but but we can sit down and, and pull in our thoughts. It's like making fruit punch, you know, everybody pours out some fruit juice into a bowl and we mix it together and that becomes a yummy drink. So it's more like that. It's more like us getting together and co-creating our thought processes. We are not prescribing a, a solution, right? That will become a holier than thou kind of a thing that I know better. No, no, no. We, we don't know better. Uh, all we know is we can, we are together. I think that's a more, more uh, uh, can, kind of uh, something which can hold on that we are together rather than uh, I know better, right? So if I if I am with people and kind of trying to co-create, trying to co-think, as I said, which has already said the magic word, the co-creation word, and and if that be the uh, the journey, then whatever gets co-created is beautiful. It may not be this or it may not be that. It may be something else. Whatever it is, it may not have a name. That is why we like to call it open learning, as in it's not a name name per se. It is just a it is so open that it has no name in that sense. So each each flavor will be will be different. So yeah, that's the way I would look at it. Okay, I think I'm getting it. Like it's about yeah, the creation. And, uh, like some Tavira, I also feel that it's um, sorry, somebody was saying something. No, I was just saying that I, no, okay. like I'm like getting sure. to the point where I'm trying to understand that it's about co-creation. I think I'm stuck on the phase where I think I know stuff. I think that's something I should get past. I think it'll take time, but <laughs> we'll get past. Yeah, and 
and it's it's, it's like uh, think back to the time when uh, you were much younger when you got a new toy and you always wanted to play with it right and or you got this new dress and you wanted to be in that dress all the time right yeah uh, i remember the time when i wouldn't want to give up on something that i had got and always wanted to use it everywhere so you know it's quite natural so don't i hope it was not hammer huh? you are trying to find ways to use um <laughs> we will talk about it some other time <laughs> <laughs> just pulling you <laughs> carry on with <Biji. laughs> yeah so so yeah yeah i mean it 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 does feel when we learn something new when we come across something and it strikes us as oh yeah you know those those eureka moments are not eureka for nothing right i mean that guy ran out of his bathroom naked because he realized something fantastic so so it's quite natural that you want to talk about it and so i would say you know uh, i would go a little further than what ratne said that while we are trying to co create it does not mean that we go with a blank slate we go with our slate we take our talking points we share our experience we share our ideas but what is important is that we don't impose it and rather have a conversation where we listen also to understand where they are coming from what is getting them stuck on the track that they are or why they are choosing the track that they are rather than saying hey you got to do it because i am doing it right so so yeah i mean that that's what distinguishes open learning from uh, you know mainstream education philosophy right here we are saying that as a philosophy we are like sponge you want to throw some krishna murti somebody wants to throw something else somebody wants to throw some uh, gandhi somebody wants to throw some freud you know throw everything we will absorb as much as we can and the shade that emerges is a tahura special or a ratne special or a prachi special and we special so so yeah so uh, the idea is being open to other things as well not just open learning we have a an android blue droid who has joined us if you could please identify yourself that would be nice um uh, we like yeah. to relate to people through their names and you know voices like that rhyming faces, android so... blue droid <laughs> if there's anything like blue droid i was not aware <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay that's deepthi on android blue droid <laughs> hi deepthi okay so any other questions thoughts experiences looks like all is well on the western front <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so i i yeah yeah rachna yes i had a question um 
since like uh, from the time exactly. off with this concept of uh, homeschooling, open learning, I'm, I'm exploring a lot of things with myself as well as with my children. So off late, you know, there's this thought that there should be someone, adult, with the children when you plan to do a homeschooling. Um, yeah, so keeping that thought aside for some time, uh, for a couple of months, um, I was just not available for my children and they were all by themselves. So there was this rhythm that we spoke about. There was no rhythm that was being followed apart from waking up in the morning to the breakfast. That's the only rhythm that we followed. The rest of the day was totally under their control. Um, yeah, so now I have this fear that it's been three to four months that that's not, I mean, I've not been with them. Um, is that learning happened or not happened? Um, should we let go? Should we, should I do something about it? So this is where uh, a little bit I'm fearful and this is where I'm a little bit low on confidence that did I lose some precious time? Did I, you know, change the course of the whole thing by not being available for that duration of time? So this keeps running in my mind. I don't know. I mean, I'm still in that confusion that is it impacted, not impacted, or should I even think about it? It's just a and it's just going to go away well, I'm just um, lost in that so it is mm. since all experienced and you've been part with been working with the children just wanted to have uh, a thought yeah yeah uh -huh. Rachna, I, I feel, see, every, every happening, every action around us influences us in different ways, right? Um, I might look at Rachi having to go some way and Ratnayesh might look at it in a different way, right? And Prachi, of course, would look at it in a very different way, uh, going from this session as in leaving this session now. Um, so I, I don't think... I can control how Ratnesh interpret, interprets it or Rachna interprets it or Prachi interprets it. What I can do is if I'm bothered about something, I can try to identify what I'm bothered about and, and talk about it with Ratnesh, with Prachi, with Rachna and, and see what comes out of it and see where that takes us, right? Because uh, you feel that you have probably, you know, missed out the bus, missed the bus in some ways. And that's not just for yourself, but with your children. So, so in some sense, what we call as dial in, dial, what is that, Ratnish? Dial into the child. No, dial the child. Dial the child. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, okay. so talk to them and have a conversation, I would say, because I don't think any one of us can tell how they would have taken it and how they are doing today, because I haven't met the children. So, you know, I don't know about Ratnesh and others, but <laughs> even if they have met, I'm pretty sure they, I mean, you have a much stronger relationship with them than we do. <laughs> So, so yeah, dial the child, I would say. And uh, just to add, yeah. that's why yes. I think your fear or your worry is from the fact that you assume that children have not learned anything in the last whatever, two months, three months, four months. So I assume that is the premise of your worry that you have missed out on something. Uh, uh, so, but so how are, what is the basis of your assumption? Or what is the basis of your uh, you know, deciding that, that they have not learned. That is my question to you. One. Second, you not being for two months. So hasn't the child or the children learned being without a parent for two months? So isn't that a learning in itself? So isn't that an experience for the children? Uh, a different experience probably. So uh, how many parents can give that experience not being with their children for two months? So I'm just saying, so if you look at it in a different way, 
probably uh, that same situation uh, can uh, uh, put a different, uh, you know, uh, 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 learning to it probably something I, I don't know. And learning is a very this word, but could put a different way to look at it. So if, if you look at it that way, probably it will give you. Ha, yeah, my child, two months, my child, behind, and uh, probably they 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 uh, they they went past. Uh, they they spend their day well, whatever. So so and learning is not necessarily the way. And if you say they are lost on learning, then is it the way what you want them to learn? Then again, there is a problem. So, so what is what is what are we looking at when we say learning? Uh, is the learning what I want them to have in that two months, or is it what the child is learning? Is learning? He's learning something. So that's what I'm just I'm wondering. Uh, right, Pranav. Big plus one. Big plus one to Pranav. <laughs> yes. So the initially when I decided to move out of this uh, thing, like for the three months, was uh, yeah that was the plus point uh, for which motivated me that yeah my children will learn to live independently to realize that their mama is not going to be with them all the time so that would be one learning for them uh, but yeah so when i've come back i'm i'm feeling that uh, did i lose that time to expose them to the different uh, environments um, wherein i had plans of uh, giving them an exposure of uh, uh, gardening, giving them an exposure of uh, bird watching, giving them an exposure of so many other environments which I had thought of didn't happen. And now that I've lost that time, um, I'm wondering, so did I miss there and did they just uh, sit with their paper and craft or, yeah, that is also learning. I wouldn't say no. But, yeah. So <laughs> it was just, uh, yeah, it's more of I would say 80% my anxiousness, my fear that uh, I took up a decision of homeschooling and I'm not doing it. Uh, my expectations of me being responsible and I'm not giving that 100%. But somewhere that 20% which always runs that, am I doing right? Am I, you know, doing something here wrong? So that that's where I felt this thought comes from. Can I add something here? Yeah. <clears throat> So uh, it's not 80% your fear. It's 100% your fear. And I'm saying this because, you know, I'm sort of in the same boat sometimes when somebody questions me, what sort of activities does Adi do these days? So I'm like, I don't know. He's playing. He's just doing whatever he wants to do. No, 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 no. You should uh, engage him. Some. He should be engaged. I said he is engaged. He's engaged in his own world. He's in a, oh my God, he's in a hyper imaginative space. Uh, phase of his life right now he has imagined I don't know he, he can imagine things like I am amazed sometimes that what is he listening whatever he's listening whatever he's observing around uh, he then I can see him doing all that in his play and I realize he is learning all that he's learning when I go for shopping he's learning how I do shopping on Amazon that also he's learning well and he's learning how I'm cooking he's observing us thoroughly all the time and uh, before joining uh, I mean I have actually not formally joined RO yet but before starting to attend these meetings this fear also used to somehow I also used to grapple with it I, I was looking for books that okay now I am to homeschool so now I have to be 100% homeschooling parent and I have to start uh, is he in the writing phase yet or not is he in the reading phase yet or not these questions were constantly coming in my mind but after attending these meetings, I realized that I actually, you know, I'm not, he's going to be, do everything himself. I just have to be the facilitator. I have to see if he needs anything, I may provide it. If he doesn't need anything, I don't need to stir him that, no, don't walk in this direction, walk in that direction. I don't know if it answers your question or it, um, you know, decreases what you were the anxiety or the fear but I just wanted to tell you that it is not 80% your fear it is 100% your fear or maybe the fear that we sort of um, you know get from the people around us from the society that, you know like I told you people keep on asking me now also everybody all well-wishers I always say all well-wishers of me and my child that what sort of activities is he doing? He should be engaged. You don't you don't spend much time with him. Are he's engaged? He's doing all his own things. He's engaged with me when he wants to. He dictates me, Mama, leave your phone now. Talk to me. Spend time with me. So I do that. 
and when he doesn't want me around he does his own stuff and i should let him that's what i've learned now in these two months with you guys so that's all <laughs> super manvi he is actually not engaged he is married <laughs> you should tell that to people he's married to his ideas to his imagination he's married man he's not engaged when he's engaged when he is good one <laughs> good one okay, can i can i add just context to what rashna's fear is uh, do we have time or can we yes yes please yeah. okay yes so, if you are learning uh, something i'm sorry i have time <laughs> okay so so, so we are so, learning I, something so <laughs> <laughs> no no i i i i'm i'm come from a corporate background like not as of now but uh, uh, till 2016 i used to work in a bank and i was at a say, say a unit head or something and i always used to worry you know ki main ek din ka chutti lunga to kya hoga kaise mera team chalega kaise ye cheeze hogi something everything will like go collapse you know a customer is will all run away like these were my fears inside in my mind you know and now it's been 5 years i have left the bank and things are moving on like the bank is still there everything is there it's the same customer is still existing there my my subordinate team is still functioning some of them might have left so things are just still there the way they are so it is it was i uh, who lost out on my holidays on my whatever i wanted to have uh, because of my fear so so i think it's it's more to do with us than the things around us so uh, we have to let go that's it and things are taken care of Uh, right prana so when i was just listening to manvi i got this thought i mean i realized what happened the uh, situation she was put in right where people were talking about engage your child why he is not doing activities and blah, all that for me it was like oh you left your children and come and they're not even going to school so they're losing time they're losing time you're not doing anything you're sitting here <laughs> so yeah i think this is where the coming now into my head that oh yeah my children have lost a lot of time and they haven't done anything fruitful and i need to do something about it i think yeah this must be the root cause yeah yeah um rachna i would also think that um kind of has come up but not really in that way i feel when we um, when we are trying to uh identify whether we did something meaningful or not right and you feel that you did everything perfectly then it's so boring there's nothing that you can't improve on then it's like kya yaar kya fayda hai right um i feel that if i'm doing something perfectly then i better find something which i'm not good at right so so if you you didn't do something perfectly that's great because now you can do better than that right so uh, i feel that we we as society some of put a lot of weightage to getting things perfect right there's a perfect time for everything there's a perfect a perfect you know shot there's a perfect uh, answer to everything and actually no life has many different answers many different you know ways of hitting the ball and many different ways of living so so you know it's it's the reality and we pick up ourselves identify we reflect i'm not saying you wouldn't have done something wrong or that you did Yeah, everything wrong i'm sure some things didn't work out and some things worked out so you reflect upon that you sit with your family or whoever asked that question and say hey you know what this is how it worked out and maybe you're right maybe i should have you know instead of extending my work assignment by another week maybe i should have said hey i'll come back to you after one month let me go back to my family and then i'll come back to you after one month i don't know right um or maybe you could have taken your children with you blah 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 i mean there are innumerable solutions that one can always come with so uh, so yeah i i feel the process of reflection is very important and being able to recognize that yes as human beings as living beings we are always improving 
and there is always a scope to improve i feel that's that's part of the learning process and and that the moment we feel that we have learned everything about something we better find something that we are not good at so that we can learn something and keep our life more engaging and more alive right right yeah if, if you allow one more perspective this meaning we can add many more but one more perspective to this is that there is an assumption that learning is only if it is tangible if i can recite a table only then i am understanding numbers or whatever you know uh, so uh, only if it is tangible only if it can be demonstrated uh, or kind of yeah tangible yeah but a lot of learning uh, or rather i would say the most important learnings don't are not necessarily very tangible uh, and they can happen anywhere with any experience uh, as prana pointed out the very fact that you were not there that itself was a huge ingredient to lot of intangible learnings which neither your children may be able to uh, express nor you may see them as manifested so soon so yeah uh, so that's another and and that a uh, learning somehow the tangible learning is valued you know if i can show you how i solved a sum kind of a thing that is valued but the intangible learning is normally uh, in the conventional sense not very valued so which is just unfortunate yeah, yeah. true yes do we have time for one more question i remembered i have one question five minutes uh, so like, uh, miss 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 one question miss <laughs> yes yeah, miss please so uh, uh, how much importance does arohi attach to exposure so how this question basically comes to my mind is i have uh, three four educators in my ho home so with them i keep on having like you said that lot of brainstorming sessions and i try to actually understand their concerns about uh, what i'm doing over here so uh, one thing that they keep on telling me is that school provides exposure to a lot of things to a lot of activities and i don't know what exactly they mean by exposure to be very honest but maybe what they mean is activity what i understand is activities many activities so um, i am we are a nuclear family currently only my husband and i and my kid how do i like how much importance does exposure have in a uh, open learning setup and If, even if i join arohi i don't think i'll be able to come to bangalore every week or every month how how does this exposure work i don't know am i able to do you follow what i'm trying to ask you're on mute ratesh ji you're on mute thanks so i want to just share something maybe you already know uh, have you you might have heard about a novel or maybe even read a novel called siddhartha okay it's a it's a very uh, very very famous novel and it's written by herman hesse who is a german and uh, it's the siddhartha is all based in india okay and herman hesse never visited india it's a surprise it came as a shock to me after reading siddhartha where i realized that herman hesse is because every word in it makes you feel you are in india how could he write a novel completely submerged in the culture of india without ever visiting india and one more thing can i add he was a school dropout <laughs> i know prana will bring this <laughs> yeah yeah he was i think he left school at whatever 12 12 years so can i say something mandi i mean my kids went for two years school yeah even i had this concept that school will give you all kind of exposures and all of that whole thing right i, I wouldn't want to comment about arohi uh, just about generic schools um yes they give you uh, exposures to competitions there's no real time uh, real life experiences which my children get day to day in the house yeah covid might be restricted but even with covid they do get exposure and this is what at least i as a parent want my children to have real uh, time experiences and to know how to handle life rather than read it in a book and but when you come to implement it it's a big not nothing helping you out at all so that that's where i put usually the school i'm not against school 
but that's my um, uh, concept yeah so there are many parents uh, like my sister also who believe school is the only place where children get exposed to so many things like world is a race and they need to be part of the race world is a lot of politics so they need to be exposed to politics how to handle and all no i don't think so all that is necessary at an age of 3 4 10 12 no not required and when it is required the children will get it so that's where i come up with so yeah so school i, I feel yeah that's my thought about school and uh, exposure to environment again they talk about sports music arts and culture where it's so limited when the child wants to still listen to the music wants to still play the football no you are cut off and you are forced to go back and sit in the classroom <laughs> that's how the timetables work right so that's how they manage the crowd i mean uh, they really can't give the liberty to one child and restrict another child so it works like um, how the whole bulk of students need to be handled so my my child literally uh, for two years the uh, playground was just next to the class and he was uh, being uh, the teacher was complaining to me that he's all the time looking at the playground he never looks at me I'm like yes he's going to look at the playground because that is more interesting than <laughs> the child inside so yeah that's my huh. I mean nothing to impose that school is not good but yeah based on each one's beliefs and what they want from children or to educate yeah i got that uh, but i do want to listen to what ratnesh ji wanted to say about uh, uh, the book and the author rather but like my question is basically that uh, the concern that people have shown me is that what if you are not able to give him that kind of exposure and he doesn't know uh, but now that I'm saying it, I'm realizing it is again the time thing. That, you know, time will run out. If whatever age he will get the exposure, he will actually, you know, learn what he wants to do. Yeah. Maybe I answered my own question. <laughs> can I answer this before you? Uh, probably you can... yeah, yeah, I don't have any... Being, being a parent, yet. because, because uh, we have been uh, associated with uh, ROI for last one and a half year. So I think uh, in terms of exposure, there is there is no there is no... Uh, say, say anything short in terms of exposure, it's like abundant uh, in terms of people, in terms of the kind of uh, activities and uh, things. Like if you have to just put it in that those words, uh, uh, it's a buffet you can say, and you have to pick up whatever if the, the child is interested in. Like the child can probably choose. Maybe he wants to be into say some some something to do with music, something to do with art, something to do with uh, maybe even science, something to do with math, but done differently. Uh, something to do with uh, anything, a radio, or uh, so there are there are many many different uh, kind of things which happen, and and I'm talking from ROE X perspective, uh, wherein which is online because we are from Bombay, even we don't uh, frequently be in Bangalore, so uh, but as in when we get an opportunity, we try to send our daughter to Bangalore, uh, uh, but yes, uh, so the, even without that, she is constantly engaged with everyone there, and she has her own routine as well. So she has her home routine here and she has her routine with ROV through uh, online. And of course, when you go to the campus, it's a completely different environment. Different. So the exposure uh, is there for uh, uh, n number of things. So, so there is no limitation in terms of exposure. Uh, uh, there is freedom, there is flexibility for child and, and there are, you know, uh, children can participate. In fact, you can add to the buffet. So it's not that there is a buffet so it's that kind of a culture if i if, if i'm presenting it rightly and so so uh, if that is the concern i think uh, uh, exposure is 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 too much it's, it's, it's really good it's really good and good part is there are people who are passionate the parents who are passionate who are running the show and they are probably good in their field and somebody doing electronics, somebody doing say computer uh, language, somebody doing something else. So everybody is, is, is a master in their particular field and uh, you know, uh, uh, providing that being a facilitator for the children. So, so that's what ROE is. Yeah. I, I just want to 
<laughs> I just want to share that uh, I don't know what is a blue droid, so I'm not exposed enough. If that makes sense. <laughs> Please expose me to blue droids, whatever that means. It, I know it has a meaning, but I don't know what it means. Hi, Ibni, you have to Go teach ahead. me what is a blue droid. I know, I'm very tired today. I just came back from Zerme. Tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Hi. So, uh, Manvi, I just feel that uh, one can never get the, uh, you know, the optimal level of exposure. You can do the best that you can at that, in that situation. But... We'll do it okay. <laughs> so uh, I just feel that when we look at uh, expectations, right, uh, we just moderate it with reality. So, and and like Pranav has shared and Rajna and you yourself have shared, you know, it's not like schools give ideal exposure, right? The the kind of exposure that you get in a school is fairly compromised and the the other big point that i feel is that i i believe whether we do it or not children are very good at looking at actions and doing the way others are doing it rather than listening to things and doing it the way they are instructed right and what is the exposure that we are doing in school the maximum exposure that we are doing in school is regimentalizing them so that they know that they should not decide. Somebody else will decide for them what they will do at what time and for how long and all that. Right? Now, is that the kind of exposure that we want our children to have? Right? So, yeah. Yeah. So, wo karni aur boli hoti hai na, toh wo, <laughs> I, I believe that children are very strong at karni, not with boli. <laughs> Yeah, so, also very yeah. Uh, a quick counter thought to this whole exposure business is that uh, there are people who believe uh, that the children in general of this generation are overexposed. So abhi let's do a discussion of exposure. Kam kaise kare, yeah? They're too exposed to too many things at too young an age. That's what people say. I am not saying that. So people say, some people say, abhi kya kare exposure ka? Yeah, the only place I will really worry about exposure is when I'm taking some photographs. So, sorry for the bad joke, but that's where it really matters. <laughs> Rest of the places, just let the child drive his car. <laughs> uh, I, I believe you're talking about film speed and stuff like that. Nobody looks at those things these days, Ratnesh. I'm old-fashioned. I'm old-fashioned, yeah. <laughs> ah. Okay, I think it's 6.30. Perfect time. We are exposed Somebody enough. Give him <laughs> Somebody yeah. give me a new gen camera. No, no, no. I don't need <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for a lovely discussion. Thank, yeah. you, Thank you. Thank you all. Nice. Bye. Have a nice, nice discussion. Bye. Yeah, nice weekend. Bye bye. 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 bye.